Howdy folks. Welcome back to Boondockery. Today I'm at the Secret Fun Spot and I am off on a little wild camp. I have a few um, things I'm uh, trying out for the first time. Going to try a few experiments. Got some exploring to do and I cordially invite you to come along. That's sweat. So, I have a little ringing to do and a little drying to do. Folks, the last time that I was here, it was about nine days ago, maybe ten days ago, and when I left the area, I had configured my Molly load pack panel in a particular configuration. I just wanted to try it out. And I explained in that video that I really didn't have the opportunity to be able to spend the night. Well, I'm able to now. And I'm going to be testing out the configuration that I had uh, in, I think it was Ructiculous 5 and um, Ructiculousness 5 was the name of the video. And the one that I packed out with the configuration with the two waste packs and the area to where the cache would be normally and the two side panels coming up. Well, when I got back to the house, I did a lot of thinking about it. And I decided that, hey, I'm going to go ahead and try that just as a pack. Just pack it up like you would be going camping. And that's what I did. So I'm going to show you the different tweaks and modifications I did to that particular load here in just a moment. But the first thing that I did is I added a waterproof uh, large rucksack cover. And this really did a fantastic job. I was really surprised that this did not have some tears and rips in it uh, because I went through quite a few Greenbrier today and I could hear it, but I gave it a good once over and I don't see any tears or punctures in it. It's a lot thicker than a lot of um, pack covers that I've seen. I'm very, very pleased with it. Just wanted to tell you about that before I take it off and show you how I tweaked um, the load on this particular Molly load panel. I'll go ahead and pull the uh, pack cover off. This pack cup, uh, cover was from Fire Force gear. Fire Force Tactical Gear, and uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Very heavy duty. Uh, it will fit a very large Bergen or rucksack, mountain ruck, what have you. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic. And um, <laughs> that thing. And the best thing about this, if um, you know we were to have a downpour, I could actually use this and make a cover for my camera and stuff too. Not to mention all kinds of other field uses for this particular pack cover. Anyway, this is my pack cover, Fire Force Tactical Gear, phenomenal quality. Now the first thing that I did is I added a folding sleeping mat. And the reason I did this, if I'm going to be using my full camp, I always have this as my full camp and, you know, just to prevent my inflatable uh, air mattress from becoming punctured and it adds a little bit of softness. I'm, I'm very fortunate because the floor here in this rock shoulder I'll be camping at tonight is very soft anyway. I don't have to worry about the twigs, things like that. And it's a lot easier to feel any type of potential hazards like glass or anything else like that. Uh, Greenbrier, which would very <laughs> unlikely be in this rock shelter. But it's just a lot easier to, to find those hazards. Uh, in this panel here, I have uh, my tent. It's a light fighter one, um, one man tent. I have my poles and my tent pegs, tent stakes, some people call them. And in the very top of that, I believe that would be my inflatable pillow. On the other side here, I have. Um, I believe I have a, a lightweight fleece 
that I have balled up. That'll be my extra insulation just in case it gets chilly tonight, which it's supposed to drop down uh, to almost uh, 58, 59 tonight. Even though that may not be particularly cold for some people compared to the uh, temperatures we've been used to um, here this past week. I mean, that's <laughs> that's almost chilly. So there, if, if there is potential of, of cold weather, I have that fleece. And again, when I'm unpacking this, I'll show how I have things stowed and things like that. I'm just giving you a rough overview right now. But also in this is my um, inflatable air mattress and my Swagman roll from, oh, golly. It'll come to me. It's been a long day. But anyway, it's a Swagman roll. Uh, it's one I always use for basically my uh, top quilt. And um, I would use it as a sleeping bag. However, it's a little snug uh, for uh, someone of my portly stature uh, to use comfortably as a sleeping bag. But that's Helicon, Helicon Tex, uh Swagman roll. Uh, however... I could not find a way to get my inflatable air mattress and my swag man roll in this to where it would fit separately, let alone have uh, room for my lightweight fleece. So what I did is I went ahead and rolled up my swag man roll and myself, my inflatable air mattress together, put it in here with left me about this much space at the top which was just about perfect for that lightweight fleece. Uh, and this uh, removable waste pouch here, that is everything that I would normally have in my Bushcraft patrol rig. <clears throat> I've replaced my uh, poncho with a Frog Togs wet weather uh, top, uh, primarily just because it's a lot lighter weight. And um, it wasn't uh, supposed to have any uh, foul or inclement weather, and if things really started getting bad, I could always pull out uh, the rain fly for my um, Light Fighter One tent and use it. But that's that's. There's a few other things in that, and I'll show you those here in a little bit. But this is primarily my bushcraft patrol rig. Everything I I, I need to take with me when I go out exploring. This bag right here is my hygiene water filtration and my food and my food is getting ready to come out because i am hungry and i'm going to eat some of that there food in that there waste pouch beef ravioli. I think I'll save that for supper. And what we have here is, let's see if I can see this real well. I believe that is veggie, veggie burger and barbecue sauce. That is for lunch. Veggie burger, barbecue sauce. Let's give it a try. Okay, we got the burger, and I'm going to let's see. I think I'll try heating up the fig bar, and definitely going to heat up the cheese spread. Yeah, that is an oatmeal cookie. I think I'll be good with that. Being cold. Now, as soon as I'm finished eating lunch here, I'm 
I will be going down to the valley below to get some water. I think this is going to be a pretty good camp. I'm not going to have to worry about rain whatsoever. Um, it's only supposed to be about 15% chance today anyway, but with this rock shelter I have, I'm not going to have to worry about any, any rain whatsoever. However, if uh, the temperature gets a little cool, I may be putting the sides down on my uh, rain fly on my tent, <laughs> keep a little bit of heat in, we'll see. Got a nice little dining facility here. I have a huge living space there. Um, I, within 10 paces, I can gather enough firewood. It looks like for a good couple hours or so, and <laughs> it's everywhere. So ample supply of firewood, very close. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sample some of my cuisine. And then I am going to be hoofing it down to the bottom of the uh, valley there and um, procuring water for this evening. We'll go ahead and uh, let you take a look at this um, veggie burger and uh, we'll see what we think. Let's go ahead and check out this veggie burger. Let's see, uh, excellent. It's got the tear right through here. This is really, really hot. <laughs> okay. Let's see, we're good. Just going through here like this, cut that up. Whenever you're trying to want anything for the camera, it's always a lot more difficult. I guess I should uh, pay the big bucks and get me a camera person, shouldn't I? Uh, I used to be able to call him cameraman. I don't know what. Is acceptable these days. This is good. And take a look at that. the The sauce itself is is very thin, and uh, the burger seems to have a decent consistency. And like I said, this is really hot. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. See what it tastes like. Like I said, this is really hot. I'm going to taste a little bit of the sauce first. not bad um, definitely doesn't taste like your traditional barbecue sauce but um, it's sort of got a little little smokiness in there kind of like that mm. don't know if I'd go out to the store and buy it if it were in bottles but it's not bad it's good and taste the patty here I said this is really hot Try to take a bite of it before I burn my thingies.
It does not have the consistency of a burger. It doesn't taste like hamburger. It has a an odd, almost like a cereal bar kind of um, quality about it. Um, it tastes okay. It just doesn't taste like a burger. And uh, I can definitely tell it's going to be filling. I'm going to go ahead and uh, break this up and sort of swash it around there in the barbecue sauce because it's just a little bit on the dry side. And uh, let you know how it goes. Well, I'm chunking it up and mixing it with the barbecue sauce. Definitely improves the um, experience of eating this. It's really odd. Let's see if you can see this. Get a focus on there. Don't know if that'll focus in there or not. But it um, has an odd texture to it. Almost reminds me of um, like a dog food when you pour you know broth or something like that on it puffs up and you're breaking it up and stirring it up so your pooch can have a, a little nicer meal that's um the appearance of it sort of reminds me of that nope. this is another one of the uh, vegan uh, MREs that my my brother uh, Jay neighbors uh, gave me The last one I had was a um, pork rib imitation. Um, it was, I think I liked it better than this. This is just uh, the texture is very, very different from the, the pork. And um, the sauce of this is a little different. It's a little different. However, if someone were to tell me that this was actual meat, a regular military issue MRE, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Because, you know, I've had a few that were pretty good. Like uh, tonight's MRE is going to be uh, beef ravioli. I actually like it pretty well. But I've had some real humdingers of MREs in the past, and they were you know, quite awful. And um, I'm not saying this is awful. This is this is okay. This is okay. Uh, I've definitely had much worse that where it was not vegan. And uh, yeah, definitely is going to provide calories and uh, fill my gut. Hmm? Bon appetit. I ate half my MRE half um well full cup of coffee that's actually two packages of coffee in there and i got sleepy <laughs> it was um it was a long long walk in as always but i just i'm really tired right now so the first thing that i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and set up camp i'm going to go ahead and put my tent up and everything and then after that i'm going to be going down there and I have absolutely no idea how far down there I'm going to be going to get water and, uh, I want to do that um, sooner rather than later because uh, it's already 3 30 and by the time I get my camp set up and uh, get down there and get back up I would say that's probably close to five and I'd like to be able to just settle down and relax by that point. And probably call it an early night, but early nights mean early mornings, which is fine. And I can get up and uh, 
get some more photography doing. One of the things I'm thinking about doing, though, is depending on um, how, how far down that is. Um, when uh, John Walsh and I were here, um, we were literally right up over there. And uh, there's a huge area. I was thinking about camping there. But there's not as many decent flat level spots as there are here. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's the amphitheater. And um, it's, it's huge. But when we were up there, up on the ledges, looking down, we could tell that there were uh, rocky areas down in, uh, like, tiered. They were uh, stair-stepped down, so I'm certain there's waterfalls and things like that down there. At least I would assume there would be. And uh, I saw that then, and that's actually down there. So when I get down there, I'm going to you know, take a look around. Hopefully uh, I'll wake up a little bit, and um, I can get up inside there and see what I can see. And uh, if not, you know, I can try it again tomorrow. But that's just what's going to happen right now. Let me go ahead and show you the camp. Whatever right there is my pack with everything in there. Let me, uh, I know I went through this a little bit. But this was the food pack that I had. I got my toiletries there. I got all the, all the food I need. I got a lot of hand-to-mouth food. I had two MREs. I made a breakfast thing for granola with powdered milk. And so all that's good to go. And I've got my uh, four liter hydration bladder, which I'm going to be taking down to the bottom of the hill with me right there and my shoulder strap so I can go hands free with it. Um, tent in here, sleeping roll here. And this is my basically my bushcraft patrol rig behind those items is a heavy duty space blanket and my batteries for all the different cameras I've got. And then of course right up there is the folding mat. Now this is the area I'm looking at. A lot of good flat area, a lot of good flat area. And I was really actually looking at that. I've walked around on this a few times, all this area with the uh, leaves. I'm not feeling any sticks. Oh, but there's one. But um, I'm going to walk through and see if there's any deadfall or anything else they've got in here. And if, yeah, it's, it's, it feels pretty good. Um, I could go ahead and smooth those out a little bit. That will provide me a little insulation from the sand. And I don't know if you've ever done any camping on sand or not. Um, sand gets cold quick. It doesn't retain heat as long as rock does. And um, it'll suck the heat right out of you. And it's, it's not a pleasant night's sleep. <coughs> However, as you can see, there's a lot of sand. And if I were to be camping on the sand, there's a couple things that I look for. First of all, you see those? Those are antlion traps. They dig those um, to catch ants. So that tells you that there are ants. The other thing I'm looking for are ant hills. Ant hills. So as you can see, the ant lions know what they're doing by building their traps there. Looking around, you don't want to uh, put your camp up on uh, ant hills, areas where um, ants are going to be frequenting. I have netting and everything else like in there on my tent. However, you're, you're going in, you're coming out, going in, coming out. Uh, when I set my uh, tent up the first time and I left it open uh, for a while, when I was, you know, putting things in and stuff like that. I had a lot of uh, large black carpenter ants get in it. And so the first night I spent in it, I wound up, you know, having carpenter ants crawling across my face and things like that. It's more of an inconvenience than it is anything else because it wakes you up. You're like, ah. yeah, you, it's just a, 
it doesn't make for a good night's sleep. However, there are some uh, types of ants that will bite you and it is very painful. And sometimes some little teeny tiny ants can cause a huge nuisance. And uh, just want to avoid those things. Normally, I like to be able to camp close to a water supply. When I was hiking in, I noticed uh, a lot of the water supplies that was up on the ridge, uh, the, the streams that are fed by springs, they are dry. And um, we were supposed to get rain every single night this past week. That did not transpire. And um, so it's a little dry right now. That is why I'm going to have to go all the way down to the valley to get my water. That being said, I need to set my camp up and do that as fast as I can so I can get down to the bottom of the hill, get my water and get back up here in a reasonable amount of time. And if I can get down there fast enough, get my water fast enough, I feel good enough. I'll go ahead and do a little exploring when I'm down there. So folks, I'm ready to go down and uh, get some water down at the bottom of the valley. Got my GoPro with me, work gloves, empty four liter bladder, got my modified bushcraft patrol rig. Hans got um, two liter, well two one liter water bottles in here. I've got a cook pot and one of these that nests with the water bottle I'm going to use to fill up this in here. Uh, there's another camera I've got and I have a um, water filter for this so I'm going to refill my one liter water bottles when I'm down at the bottom and then fill this back up bring this back at the top of the hill then we'll be ready to, to go ahead and settle in for the evening I'm going to go ahead and go on down and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens once I get down there Yo folks, getting ready to go on down the hill, get my water provisions. That's it. I have no idea how far down I'm going to need to go, but I do know it's very steep. I'm not looking forward to coming back up this hill, but unfortunately because all of our water sources that are at the top of the ridge have dried up, we haven't had any rain for a while, so therefore the water table, a little low, 
and it's making our uh, spring fed water system just a little bit dysfunctional okay these ferns are absolutely gorgeous and as you can see there's no shortage Turn you around here in just a second. Just wanna wow. <laughs> a lot of deadfalls. That is good. A lot of firewood for me. A lot of firewood. I don't know what degree of angle this hill is, but it is quite quite steep. Okay, I'm going to try to hold this as close to level as I can. That is the deadfall. That's not quite as steep of an angle as the hill. Uh, okay, here we go. Now you get a sense as to the steepness of this hill. And it looks like that is going to be a cliff or a drop off already. So I might need to reroute around as it is. Let's see what we got here. See if this is a drop off. but it's not a drop-off. I can appreciate that. Well, it looks like there's some stagnant water there. I don't want any of that. I definitely don't want any of the mosquitoes that are associated to it with it either. I see a game trail. And from here I can actually see the, the deer hoof prints. I might wind up taking that back. So one thing with uh, game trails is uh, Wildlife, they like to take the path of least resistance. Now, even though some of the game trails you may follow may seem a little extreme, they actually are probably one of the better ones, routes you can take. You have to keep in mind that the game that travel them are quadrupeds and a lot of the things that bother us as far as effort goes is effortless for them. I can definitely feel the humidity change coming down here. It's so much moister down here. I'm very, very glad I'm camping at the top. But that right there, that would not be a bad spot to camp. That's a very nice and level. It's got a little bit of coverage. That right there behind that rock is nice and flat too. Have you a little bit of security. Okay. Oh, it's pretty down here. Look at this. Look how pretty.
Yeah, this is the area that, oh, wow, look at that. That's cool. Yeah, this is the area down here that I saw from up on the, the ledge of what I call the amphitheater. And I thought I saw rock down here, rock formations, to where the stream was running through. And that proves to be correct. You know, It's quite beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and that's that's excellent water right there. You can see that it's still moving. It is clear, which is two very good signs. When I was in South Carolina with with Brother Jay, um, the the lake. It's very turbulent with watercraft traffic. And um, I, I had spent a lot of time rinsing out my filters because the sand and other sediment clogged it up a little bit. Now, fortunately for me, it was sand and the sand rinsed out pretty quick. This is pretty nasty. I would definitely not want to be camping in proximity to this. You know, before, oh, this is so pretty. Look at that up there. I have no idea what the picture quality of this thing is with this degree of light. But I, I'm pretty sure I really like the possibility to get my water from that deeper pool there. And before I make my mind up, I want to check out the main stream here, the main creek. This is a pretty decent sized one. If you followed my secret fun spot videos, you will remember this. Now, scramble up this hill. Oh. <clears throat> now that's not too bad, but it's definitely not as clear as the spring fed creek. I'm going to go ahead and come back around and uh, perhaps where there's normally a waterfall, there might be a nice deep rounded pool that'll be easy to get my cook pot into. This looks like it should be a scene from a Predator movie or something. You know, you're moving your way into this, this dead end. And uh, all the Predators waiting for you to move in. It's amazing how dark it is. I mean, it's, it's, we have fairly clear skies today. A little, little, little bit of cloud, not much. It's 4.35 right now. And that definitely looks and feels like it's so much later than that. I have no idea what that was. I don't think it was a predator. But it was large. Now, let's see how far up in this ravine I can go.
Yeah, there's some iron in this water. Not nearly as bad as some places I've been. Wow, this is cool. I sure hope you can see this. Now in the winter, as long as the water wasn't too tall or too tall, duh, too deep. I have no idea if you can see any of this or not. And I do not have, wait a minute. I think I do. Oh, wait a minute though. Look at this. All this is brand new to me. I've never seen any of this before. Look at this, this is just absolutely breathtaking. Now, one of you smart cookies out there that are watching this know what that green vegetation is there. I cannot recall the name of it. However, I do know that that is a surviving prehistoric um, plant life. I mean, it's been around since um, the times of the dinosaur. This is absolutely excellent water because we have life, life, life in the water. That's always a good sign. You get up here and find a dead horse. That's, that's what you call a bad sign. A bad sign. Wow. Wow. Forgive my vast vocabulary and verbal articulation. I know that that can uh, bewilder some people sometime. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Look at this. Now, where we were, when I was looking down and saw this, all this down here, that is a flat shelf. And then it goes back at a, a steep angle and then it goes up to the cliff face and goes up at least another 75 to 100 yards to the top of the edge of the cliff. And that's where the amphitheater and the, and the, the shelf or the, the uh, terrace we were standing on is. So all this, this is like almost halfway down from the top um, from where we were when John and I were looking at this stuff. This is absolutely amazing. You know, I'm not really seeing a great water spot just yet. This looks fairly dry. That doesn't look very good. Okay, way up there, you can see the overhang to what I call the amphitheater. So that is up there. I mean, it's up there. Look how gorgeous this is. And that is what I would call a dead end. Okay. This is a, a headlamp. I have to shine around. 
because I don't think that you were able to see most of what I was looking at here in the shadows. Now, keep in mind, this is a still only about, I think it's 440 right now. It's only 440. And uh, it's fairly dark in these little nooks and crannies. I would love to be able to climb up in through there, especially that, that one up there. That looks like a pretty decent cave. Lots of minnows, probably some tadpoles. So the water is definitely clean enough for life. The way that the water carves this sandstone is so cool. This is absolutely amazing. There's a shelf right up there. I bet there's some way to get around to that back through this back way, but wow. <laughs> I know I'm not going to get any uh, vocabulary awards for my narration. That's okay, I can deal with it. This wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. But it's still very, very, very cool. <laughs> now in the winter, this would really, really be cool. Yeah, this would be campable in the winter. No bugs. Wow. There is some serious animal traffic through here. Very serious. Well, I think I can turn my headlamp off now. Okay. It is time for me to collect my water and start clawing my way back up to the ridge to my camp just one last look Time to get more water.
I have six liters of water and I did everything I possibly could to force a liter down my throat uh, before packing everything up. I don't really want to do this trip again out of necessity. And um, as far as my fire tonight goes, I'm going to try to design my fire uh, that it should burn out completely within the wee hours of the morning. And if by any chance, I mean, it's very chilly again tomorrow morning, I can always make another one. And uh, if I need to come back down to get some more water, I'm going to possibly risk bringing my good camera down to get some of this on film. This is so rugged and so gorgeous and so beautiful. And I don't want to jinx myself. I don't believe in jinxes. But I, <laughs> one of those things is, you know, if you say something and you say, well, gosh, I can't believe I haven't done this yet. And all of a sudden, boom, it happens. Uh, irony, I guess, is, would be what it's called. I do believe in irony. And, um, or karma, I guess. Irony, I prefer. But I have not been bit by any bugs. I find that remarkable. If you uh, just look at all the dark spots, just the dark spots. Let's say maybe, especially that one right up there. That one looks like it goes back pretty deep. If you look at all of these dark spots, these little overhangs and rock shelters, let's just say for the sake of saying so, that one out of every 10 of those would be a decent survival shelter camping shelter, bushcrafting shelter, wild camping shelter, what have you shelter. This area is absolutely teeming with them. Now, let me tell you a plan I've got. And um, one of the things that I'm trying today and it will be overnight, is that I have parked at the one spot I really wasn't crazy about parking overnight. I, I cleaned everything out of my vehicle, so there's absolutely nothing important in it that can be stolen. I have full coverage on my vehicle, and I decided to, to just wing it. And uh, my vehicle will be uh, where I normally park overnight. And uh, if it, <laughs> everything goes well, I'm going to keep doing it because this area is just too awesome to ignore and to not constantly return to. And as the seasons change, so does it. And I'm looking very much forward to experiencing all the seasons in my secret fun spot. Now, all this creek through here, this is a cliff face. And a good long ways down there. Like this cliff face goes on for a long way. And at one point, getting toward the end of the actual cliff face, is the overlook the overlook overlooks a hillside that's way over there through through those trees and what i want to do is i want to because i i pretty much explored most of that stuff up through there 
and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. What I want to do next, and this is going to be a big fall thing for me because I want to be able to see the cliff faces. And as you can see, they're pretty obscured by vegetation. If I follow this valley up through there about a half a mile, there is a small draw. And I don't mean small, I mean it's big, but compared to another one, it's, it's almost a valley. It looks very intriguing on the map. Just beyond that, about another half mile, is a much larger valley. Um, and some of the, I guess, contour lines, a lot of them form a single line. So I know there's some cliffs and some extreme um, terrain there. But up through there is where I want to go next. And until the leaves start changing and falling off the trees and making it easier for me to see what I'm doing, who knows? I may go up there as it is now um, you know we're not going to start losing leaves for a while who knows I may, I may go up there then but um, definitely this fall I'm going to start doing a lot uh, more treks here and uh, definitely up through there and the reason I want to wait till fall and winter is, is the visibility is so much better you can see for great distances and really get a good idea as to what the terrain uh, holds for you. And like this area here that I just came down to get water. I'd never come down this before. And even in the winter when I was here, it was so steep, I couldn't see. All I could see was the other side of the bank, which is up over there. I couldn't see any of this or any of this. As a matter of fact, you can't even see the top of my rock shoulder. And it is, it is very, very tall. So terrain is hidden. In the fall, and the leaves are down, up through winter, early spring, <coughs> no foliage on yet. What I have is clear visibility. Oh, this is so beautiful. I'm so glad I came down here. Just one more look and I wanna... I'm gonna get to turn this down, for, turn this off for now and uh, see if I can uh, relocate that game trail and see how that goes going on up. I've relocated the game trail and <laughs> it's better than going straight up. I'll just leave it at that. It's better than going straight up. I think you get a, an appreciation for the steepness this would be so much easier if I had my trekking poles oh yeah lots lots easier That's okay. <clears throat> I have a few hours till nightfall. Camp's already set up. All I gotta do is make it up here and go to sleep. I've got water with me. Got a little food. <laughs> I can take my time. Oh, just some quick stats. Wow. I'm making my way 
upward my new bushcraft patrol rig, which is basically a pistol belt with an accessory pouch and two water bottle pouches, is 13 pounds. That's with my pistol loaded and a loaded 17 round magazine. Also, my waste pouch that has the contents of my old bushcraft patrol rig. Um, it weighs, oh golly. I'm thinking it was about 11 pounds. And my pack and my bushcraft patrol rig all combined weighs 43 pounds. And that was without the four liter bladder being full. Okay. That uh, hemlock tree that's up there almost looks like a rib, ribs from the rib cage. Okay. <clears throat> so I've lightened my load up a good bit, which I'm pleased about. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to try that Molly load panel out as the, the pack configuration I tried this time. Big old turkey feather. And uh, it made me make some decisions as far as streamlining my kit, which was very important. And we will see how that all turned out as far as my decisions go by tomorrow morning. If all goes well, I will sleep warm and sound. And I'm sorry to do the spider, but we're gonna need to take it down. Wrap you around there. Okay, I am sorry. At least you're right back where you were. You're not stuck to my face. Nobody wants to be that. Everything is very slippery here. Every week, oh, excuse me, every day for the past two weeks, our humidity in evenings has been 100%. This <coughs> is supposed to be the first night in two weeks that the humidity is not. 100%. It's supposed to be, I think, 87 at the high, which I'm certain a lot of people would think is ridiculous. But here in southeastern Ohio, that's almost Tucson weather for us. Not too far from camp now.
There's home. Well, folks, I'm going to take all this stuff off and probably wring my shirt out again and cool down, try, try to cool down a little bit, uh, rest a few minutes, and I'll see what else I can get into. Well, I got everything set up for camp tonight. I have a fire ring, I have uh, tender, uh, fuel, everything I need, uh, kindling. It's got some larger stuff. Cleared all the leaves back away from the fire pit. Packs there ready for me to access it whenever I need it. Tent set up, we're ready to go. One of the things I realized when I was clearing away all of these leaves and debris is that there was a fire pit here before I got here and it was here a long time ago and by looking at all the sand and the coloration of the sand I can tell that there have been many many campfires here if not hundreds possibly thousands throughout the many, many years that this has been here. And I found a couple other spots to where there were fire pits there at one time too. And um, it's, <laughs> it's really neat uh, thinking about all the people that have been here and have shared fires with their friends and kindred or had a fire by themselves uh, that had been here for hunting or in transit to someplace else. Tonight, it's just, uh, it's just camp. Camp with history. The fire setup I have to, to tonight is something I call a struggling upside down fire. And the reason being is I have very poor quality firewood. I'll explain that in a second. A struggling upside down fire struggles because I put multiple layers of firewood on top of each other all going the same direction. Normally what I do is I have good quality firewood that I cut you know, all around from where the camp is. I lay it positions in single layers. Each layer is going to be shifted 90 degrees each time. So I have a layer going this way. I'll have a layer going this way. I'll have a layer going this way. I have a layer going this way. And as it burns, those uh, coals and sparks and embers sort of fall down in between the little nooks and crannies. Now what I've done with this is I've closed up all those little nooks and crannies because I have very poor quality firewood. It is dry, it will burn, as a matter of fact it's going to burn too fast. So that's why I'm going to make it struggle a little bit so it will last a little while longer. I've got a decent supply but if by any chance I can just let this one die over the wee hours of the evening, wake up the next morning, not really have to start another fire, clean all this up. I will have firewood, at least uh, kindling and starter wood the next time I come back and I can hide that. Now the reason this is poor quality firewood, when I reenacted, we called this kind of firewood squall wood. And squall wood was basically any 
deadfall that you could harvest and make fire with without using any tools whatsoever. So if you can break them over your knee, break them between in a Y of a tree, something like that, that's the most you want to do. Anything that you can pick up that will burn, and as, you know, it has it, a lot of this wood winds up being there for a long time. And even though it will burn okay, it's going to burn really, really fast. It's going to burn like paper because it's overly seasoned. And it's not like, you know, decent sized firewood, you know, it's the size of your arm or the size of your thigh. When you cut it, it's going to burn for a good little while. I've decided to go with the struggling upside down fire. We'll see how it goes. Once the sun goes down, I'll get her lit and um, we'll enjoy it. I'm going to go ahead and get tonight's uh, supper taken care of. It's already a little after seven. And uh, tonight, the MRE is ravioli. Beef ravioli, that is. And this is an actual non-vegan MRE. And I, of course, uh, field stripped it and we vacuum sealed it. And as always, the heaters rarely ever work for me. So I'm going to use boiling water. I'm going to put the cheese in there as well. And there's one other thing I was looking at. It was the toffee cookies. I don't know if they'll fit in there or not, though. Oh, well, that's the only thing we'll put in there. Get an Esbit tab. I just pre-measure the amount of uh, water I need for my coffee. And that's the amount of water I put in to heat up my MRE packages. And when the water is hot, I just pour it back in here with my instant coffee. And I have coffee for afterwards or before or before, during and after regardless. I'll have coffee. As far as the pack I used today, I was very, very happy with it. Uh, it rode very well with my new harness rig I have with uh, the water bottles on it. I did not like the way the water bottles hung on the belt of the load panel or the Alice frame uh, load pack. Neither one of them. It's, uh, I do not like the waist belt. It's, it's what I have, so that's what I'm using. Therefore, I stripped down my old Bushcraft patrol rig. I equipped it with the um, water bottle pouches, one of which I've modified. I'll show you all this stuff tomorrow when I, I pack everything up. But one of the modifications I did is I, I removed the outer pelt pouch that the zipper failed on but regardless i've um, loaded up the, the the pack put it on tried it out with the harness assembly it worked great in the uh, bushcraft laboratory and for the four miles that i hiked out here today plus a little extra i did some um, 
side path stuff to try to get some some more uh, decent footage to add to the video but it was very comfortable is it practical I don't I don't know if it was a more minimalist camp if uh, I would be using my um, hammock uh, I think that it would probably be a, l a little more practical as it is it's, it's pretty minimal I have my uh, my bushcraft patrol rig items my must must have items in one waste pouch the other waste pouch has all the food in it the filtration system my hygiene stuff and so it's it's going to dwindle down if I did not have the folding um, sleeping pad that would have facilitated room for maybe something else uh, maybe even a camp chair or something like that would have been very nice but I've got beautiful seating right here pull up a rock pull up a tree uh, yeah I don't know um, I think if that's what I had I could definitely make it work uh, to use it in a, a cold weather situation that would have to take some rethinking I would have to have something large uh, a big bag or something like that in the main compartment area and then attach the waste pouches to the exterior of that like I did my cash but it was very comfortable it rode very well it's a little wide <laughs> I dragged it a lot of branches and through some green briar but the um, uh, pack cover seemed to uh, protect it very well kept everything in place and it was it was a very comfortable hike in uh, the weight very manageable I think everything total was about 43 pounds um, you know yeah very very manageable and uh, very comfortable and, uh, tomorrow uh, when I'm packing things up I'll show you how I pack things up where I'm putting things and things like that so you, you can see how I'm maximizing or trying to maximize my economy of space with the pouches and um, the room that I have on the low panel. Howdy folks, getting ready to turn in, a little after nine, it's warm, but not too bad, I really hope the, the temperature drops, 
and uh, gets fairly cool. Just be a, a lot more comfortable night's sleep. See you in the morning. Good night. God bless.